We used to think that the ocean was this inexhaustible resource, that we could go back and catch as many fish as we wanted and those populations would never blink an eye, they would never suffer as a result. Almost 90% of our seafood here in the United States is imported. We've depleted our wild stocks in the ocean. The human population is increasing year after year, and that population is hungry for protein, lean protein, high quality protein, like seafood. So if we're going to feed all of those people, we can't just keep relying on the oceans to provide all that seafood. Aquaculture is really critical as a part of our climate resilience strategy, as a part of the overall food security system. It's important that we grow aquaculture. We need to produce more and more food with fewer resources. Aquaculture is the farming of fish and growing of fish product, just like you would on any other farm. We're out here growing fish and they're in such an intimate environment that you have to care for every aspect of their life, even making sure that there's enough room for each fish. Riverance Provisions is part of a collection of companies known as the Riverance Group, which has been innovating both in Washington and here and in the Magic Valley of Idaho that grow rainbow trout and steelhead and have put a lot of energy and effort into the genetics and into the feed and into the environment to really continue the tradition of raising trout here in Idaho. The reason that Riverance is in Idaho is because the water is in Idaho. Where we're located along the Snake River, um, it's called the Hagerman Valley, but it's also known as the Magic Valley or the Thousand Springs region. Deep underground is, is our water resource, the Snake River Plain Aquifer. So it's this underground river, essentially, and the water, anywhere it can find a place to spring out of the, of the rock formations, it does. Ground water comes out at 59 degrees Fahrenheit, 365 days a year, and that happens to be the, be the perfect temperature for raising trout. We don't pump water anywhere. There's no electrical cost associated with moving our water. It's all gravity flow. And that's really kind of an ingenious, simple, elegant design to those farms is you're just letting the water do what the water would normally do and flow with gravity back to the river. We also remove a considerable amount of fish waste from the water, which is a unique aspect of land-based aquaculture, most of which is provided as compost as terrestrial farm fertilizers. And when we harvest our fish, the byproducts are used as pet food, fish oil, liquid fertilizer, or it's composted. The spring water that we use to raise our fish emerges from the Snake River Plain Aquifer and is incredibly clear. And when we return that resource to the river, I would argue that it has far better clarity than the Snake River itself. We, we ensure that the water is properly oxygenated, uh, before it goes back to the river. And this is a resource that is on loan to our farms, essentially. And so we want to make sure that we're good stewards of that and return it to the environment in really good condition. Riverin's provision minimizes its impact on natural resources today, so the future generations can continue to responsibly farm trout and steelhead in Idaho. We've created a marketplace that ensures a consistent supply of locally grown fish without the need to harvest rainbow trout or steelhead from the wild. It all starts with the egg. Our sister company, Riverence Brood, has done some incredible work with selection to ensure that the eggs that we receive at Riverence Provisions are the highest quality genetics available. The choices that we make and the selections that we make to guide our breeding program in one direction or another is ultimately going to determine how well those fish perform in the farm. The eggs are brought out to our farms. They're put into our hatch houses where they increase from the egg to a small fry. Fry are like a lot of newborn animals. They require a lot of care and attention during those early life stages if they're going to be set up for success later on in life. We then teach them how to feed. We raise them for 30 to 60 days in the hatch house, and then they're put out into our raceway farms. From there, it's just a matter of increasing in size. So the fish are raised in flowing water. They're allowed to swim against the current like they would naturally do in the wild. And they'll spend about a year in the raceway farms where we feed them a proprietary blend of feed ingredients that is sourced from North America. 
You have to have good genetics, you have to have good feed, and you have to have a clean environment. For us, that's really what welfare is all about. There's a lot of discussion and a lot of research that goes into trying to understand what welfare really means for fish. You know, are fish able to feel pain? Are fish able to experience emotions? And there's a lot of research in that field, but there's not a lot of definitive results. So for us, what we care most about is making sure that the functional aspects of welfare are addressed. We really do care for the fish and we do what's best for them in all stages of life because even at the end of the life cycle, we do not get back what we put into them if we did anything wrong to them. So the better we treat the fish, the better our end product is. You know, most people maybe don't understand aquaculture initially, but when you have a chance to sit with someone and explain what aquaculture is and how it does help us address things like climate change, how it does help us limit carbon footprints of food production, increase our food security, it all kind of pencils out. It makes sense to people once you sit and have the conversation with them. I think that's something that's really important for consumers to know about aquaculture and part of what fish care can help us to communicate is focusing on the fish, focusing on the environment, and focusing on the people. That really helps us to communicate a somewhat complex idea in a simple way. I still care about having thriving fish populations and functioning ecosystems and an ocean that is, that is healthy. The work that I do and the work that everyone does in aquaculture is helping to contribute to that kind of future. And so I guess that's what I'm most excited about is, is seeing a future where people are better fed, where we have greater access to seafood and our oceans are still thriving.